I'm Natalie Calabat. Welcome to the Quirk Hotel. Come on in. Follow me inside. Let's head up to the rooftop bar. If someone is wondering where to go and they have a free night, why the Quirk Hotel? Why here? I think it, it, we offer something different for Richmond. Taylor Heineke says he was weeks away from giving up on football. The former Old Dominion quarterback set a timer if he wasn't in the league within two years after his last start. That was it. But the game wasn't done with him yet. $10 million and a reduced role for Daniel Snyder. That's the price that the Washington football team will pay for past mistakes. If this is it for Carly Lloyd and Megan Rapino in a major competition, they left us with a final set of memories. Both veterans scored two goals in the bronze medal game as the U.S. beat Australia 4-3. The Washington football team kicked off four days of public workouts here in Richmond this morning and all eyes will be on the passing attack as newcomer Ryan Fitzpatrick battles for the job against Taylor Heineke and Kyle Allen. She actually started not as a gymnast but a trampolinist so you can imagine how well trampoline translates to diving just the height the rhythm it's almost like dance. It's been an amazing run for both Phoenix and Milwaukee. The Suns just missed the playoffs last year, but the addition of Chris Paul and the development of players like Devin Booker have allowed them to make a big jump. Sadly, we won't be hearing the roar of the crowd as gold, silver, and bronze medals are won. Due to the rising cases of COVID-19 in Japan, the Olympics will be closed to spectators. 41 wins, the program's first trip to the Women's College World Series. There is absolutely nothing to be ashamed of for the James Madison Dukes as their run came to an end against number one Oklahoma, 7-1. Only Jeff Gordon and Tony Stewart are ahead of Chase Elliott on the list of all-time road course wins. Elliott added number seven to his resume yesterday at Road America. Kristen Hayden broke new ground at this year's Olympic trials. She finished fourth on the three-meter springboard as an individual and fifth in synchro with her partner on the same board. It's just the beginning as she tries to become the first diver of color to make Team USA for the Paris Games in 2024. You never would have known that Trey Turner was dealing with a finger injury by the way he's swinging the bat. The national shortstop homered on the first pitch in his first game in four days. The Bucks needed a victory at home in Game 3 to keep the series from totally slipping away, and they took advantage of mistakes from the Suns in the 20-point win. It was Bush against Bush on the final laps at Atlanta yesterday. Kirk got the better of younger brother Kyle and took the checkered flag in the final race before the mile-and-a-half speedway is renovated. According to CBS Sports' John Rothstein, Mike Young has signed a three-year extension to his contract at Virginia Tech. Young initially signed a five-year deal when he was hired before the 2019-2020 season, so this means he is now locked up through the next six seasons. Omaha or bust, that was the situation for the Virginia Cavaliers in Game 3 of the Super Regionals against Dallas Baptist. And this was a good one from the start. Top of the third, Dallas Baptist gets moving first. Rivertown on. Jackson Glenn sends a dart onto the concourse, and the Patriots have the lead. Virginia responds. No one on. Nick Kent homers to left center. Right then and there, Virginia got on the board. But here's the thriller. Bottom of the seventh. Bases loaded for UVA. Kyle Teal hits a grand slam. And just like that, Virginia is headed to the College World Series for the first time since winning the national championship back in 2015. The fans have turned out all week as Washington football training camp made its return to Richmond. It's also a unique opportunity for the players' families to see them at work. Chase Young's father, Greg, was happy to make the short trip down I-95 from Upper Marlboro. A lot of Chase Young supporters out here. How does it feel for him to have so much support from the Richmond fan base? He, he loves it. Um, he, he was happy to be back here. It's first, well, not be back, but be here for the first time. Last year we missed it due to the COVID, and um, he's having fun. You know, I talked to him last night. He's having a ball. It feels great, though, uh, seeing my mom over there supporting uh, and, and my other family. And, you know, just the fans, all the fans out here supporting us. Um, I wish we can slap, I, slap, I can slap everybody's hands, sign everybody's jersey and ball. But, uh, you know, I'm just so happy. Washington fan Tyler Karen made the trip from Virginia Beach wearing Young's number 99. It's his first jersey purchase in nine years. Why Chase Young? We're all excited about his arrival here. His second year is going to be electric. We're all excited. They refer to it as his motor. His motor is there, you know, and I put that motor in him. <laughs> that you motor is because of me. I did that. That motor is because of you. Explain that. We always had this motto of if you play soft or you don't play hard, you get hurt. And he's never been hurt. So he's always played 
up to that point where he's never playing soft or, or never taking the play off. What should we see from your son this season? Um, always hard work. Never give up. Uh, never takes a play off. Um, you're going to see uh, tenacity and everything. I mean, that's, that's what he comes. That's what he brings. When it's about them, it's on. That sums up the philosophy of Carol Adams, whose work in the community has touched the lives of countless children. That selfless effort earned her a nomination from Bruce Richardson Sr. for an honorary SB. It is with great honor because of your work in this community, Mrs. Carol Adams, Richmond police officer, that we present you with an honorary ESPN SB. Congratulations, young lady. I'm just thoroughly honored um, to have been nominated by Bruce and then for you all to select me. Um, I'm, I'm just about the work, just about trying to help save lives and change lives. Carol Adams grew up surrounded by domestic violence, and in 1980, she was in the next room when her father shot her mother. I could have given up on the world. I could be mad at the world. I could be mad at everybody else. But the opportunity to show, to, to be that beacon of hope for other kids and for them to know that just because something happens in your life doesn't mean that you give up and that there are people out there that wants to help you. But instead of letting that tragedy define her, she chose to give a hand to others. Adams provides a safe and nurturing environment for young people. Team. The goal here is to spark that interest or that light that's in them because all kids don't have um, the best of environments that they're growing up in and you know and I know that from firsthand experience. During the pandemic, Carol knew the need was even greater. She kept the camp going, moving across the street to a local park and taking every safety precaution. I believe you can do anything that you choose to do and that means that you just have to create a way. And some of the young men and women that Carol mentored have felt the call as adults to help. My heart is always like firecrackers just to see them grow and as I was mentioning some were like this when I first met them. Now I'm looking up at them but you know they want to be here and they want to occupy this space so and this is God's space. This is the space that God created. Carol is proud of the results but humble about the credit. Thank you to you all because this is about y'all. This is about working with y'all and this is about providing a safe space and fun activities for you all. And so it's not just about me because I would exist, but it's about the things that we're doing to help make life better for, it, for each and every one of you. I say thank you and I show her kids say thank you. <laughs> wow.